What's good, y'all? Elvis here. Welcome to another episode of Better Barbering. My new people, Better Barbers is a series that I started where I share tips and tricks that made me a better barber, that other people can use to make them better barbers, and ideally better people. It's been a smooth minute since my last video. I'm not gonna front. I've just been kind of uninspired. This isn't as hard as it used to be, so my motivation is very different. And I've been really just working out what my purpose is. And uh, that made me reflect on my barbering career. I'm kind of over being a barber, but I still love this the same or whatever. But I'm trying to turn this back into more of a, like exclusively a hobby than a job. But I was reflecting and looking back on my journey and there's a few things along my journey that I regret. But to be clear, I stand on everything I said and everything I did. I meant what I said and what I did when I meant it. And I take back nothing because every decision, regardless if it was a good decision or not, led me to where I am. And this is the best version of myself I've ever been. I don't necessarily regret these things, but if I was to go back and live these things over again, I would make different decisions. So today I'm talking about my top five regrets as a barber. My number one regret, listening to ignorant people. It's human nature to communicate with other people. We're kind of wired to go off what people say because there's too much going on in the world for us to like gather all the knowledge ourselves. It's human nature to trust what somebody said about it. If I'm in the woods with somebody and they say, hey, don't eat those berries. Those berries are poisonous. They kill so-and-so. My curiosity for what these berries taste like is not going to overpower the idea that that person planted on my head. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's ingrained in us to do that. It's for our survival and generally for our benefit. So listening to other people and believing them is a positive quality. But it's a problem when the person you listen to does not know what the fuck they're talking about. And this is general advice, not listening to ignorant people, but I'm exclusively making this point number one because in a barbershop, you are influenced by a lot of people and a lot of ideas. And there's a lot of people that are gonna speak on a lot of things like they're knowledgeable, having no knowledge whatsoever. And it's great when it comes to like jokes, entertainment, just when you know the mood is light and shit is not serious. But when you're actually talking about important things, like there's going to be somebody that's going to tell you something that is bullshit, but they're going to believe it. And that's going to make you kind of believe it. Before I did my own research, when I talked to barbers about taxes, it was such a scary thing. It was so complicated. And my perception of like, let's say the task of doing taxes was so much bigger in my mind because I was listening to all these other people talk about their ignorant perspective. Barbers think, oh, if I pay taxes, I'm getting effed over because that's all this money that I got to pay is money out of my pocket. But if they really did the research or even just got in touch with somebody who had the knowledge that could do that for them, they would understand as a barber being self-employed, you have hella write-offs you can take advantage of, especially because I spend more money on my business or expenses related to my business than anything else. I'd be saving hella money on taxes, especially compared to people that are employed. The only difference is I just don't get a refund, but I'm paying way less in taxes every year. But if I listened to a bunch of barbers that were scared of taxes and scared of learning the information, I would have did myself dirty and not took advantage. Then I wouldn't have been able to get approved for this apartment. I wouldn't have got a, I wouldn't have got approved for multiple cars. You know what I'm saying? I would have did myself a disservice because I would have less tools at my disposal to live my life. Just because I listened to what people said without doing my own research. All right, number two biggest regret kind of relates to number one, thinking small. Your perception of what is possible is framed up by what your experience is. If you never saw somebody like you make $100,000 a year, but most people would think that is not a possibility for them. So the mindset and the ideas of the people around you influence you to a very, very high degree. When I first started cutting hair, I was thinking really, really small. I was cutting in my dorm just, you know, to get a little money for textbooks and a little college bullshit or whatever. But I didn't even know barbers made money for real. And I look at the median income for barbers and it was like, I don't think it was even 30K. And I was like, well, shit, I'm in school for chemical engineering. And that salary, have a nigga sitting pretty, you feel me? So I wasn't worried about cutting hair as a real money-making opportunity. So I bullshitted with it for a really long time. Like I was working on my skill set and I was progressing in my art. But I, as far as the business side of barbering, I was bullshitting because I didn't think barbers made money. So I didn't think it was worth time building the business for real. I just thought, oh, the better my haircuts get, the better people will pay me. Duh. No. It sounds that simple, but it's not that simple. There's so many other factors that go into that. The best thing that I did was surround myself with what I consider to be elite barbers. Like barbers that, I, that weren't shooting for average. Barbers that had lived their life on their terms. And I, can, and I can get game for structuring my life. Especially because it was less about the bread for me. I wanted a very specific lifestyle. And originally with barbering, I was thinking very small when it comes to lifestyle. 
Because I thought barbers live like drug dealers, you know what I'm saying? Like, when somebody call you up for a cut, shit, psh, I'm cutting. I thought barbers had to be on call to do well in business. And now I'm realizing, no, nah, it was all up to me. I could structure this myself. But if I didn't think bigger by surrounding myself with other people that thought bigger, I would have slowed that progression for myself even more. Number three biggest regret, trying to wing everything and do it yourself. This is a point I got to give my nuanced perspective on because I'm all for just jumping in, doing it. Stop worrying about this shit being perfect. Stop trying to figure out the 10 different ways these other people that have been doing it forever are doing it. Jump in, play with it, figure it out. I'm all for a hands-on approach. But the problematic side of that is a lot of times, me specifically, I like to just fuck it, I'm gonna do it how I do it, just wing it. And that's great for starting and like avoiding like the analysis paralysis and the bullshit of like deciding when the perfect time is. But just trying to wing it is an effective way of learning, but it's not the most effective way of learning. With a new craft or whatever, I think you should jump in and play with it, get a feel for it. But I think it's worth investing in learning the fundamentals from somebody who has the fundamentals on lock. You feel me? But because somebody with a certain level of expertise on the fun fundamentals will streamline your process building those skills. So instead of taking a few months to learn a concept or learn a skill, it could just take a few weeks. I consider myself self-taught. Well, you know, trial and error in YouTube and stuff. Self-taught as far as like for the first four years of my career, it was literally just me and my clippers figuring it out. There was nobody over my shoulder giving me hands-on instruction. And you know, I built the skill that I needed to build. But when I got to barber school four years after I started, the people that I was in school with that came in with no haircutting experience, never touched clippers, were doing a stupid amount of growth in the first six months of just being at school. I peeped that it was mainly the hands-on instruction and like the nuanced perspective and expertise that our instructors were giving us. And that made me realize, even though I'm good at figuring out how to learn things for me, there's always a better, more efficient way to do it. I have barber mentors that have been cutting hair 10 to 20 years. And the game they got in that time, they passed it to me. And that streamlined my process so I could get faster progress. And now I realize I'm on the end of that mentor relationship because I got little homies, barbers under me, that cutting hair like maybe one to three years. And these kids damn near my level. I just, I just love to see it. Don't sleep on mentorship. Mentorship makes everybody better faster. Number four biggest regret being absorbed in social media. So basically all my barber contemporaries, like if, if I was a rapper, like my barber double XL freshman class, basically. But the people I came into the game with, because we came in the age of social media, our approach to the business, completely different. And when I was first started cutting hair, all barbers on Instagram were trying to do, post fire pictures, fire content, and convert that into clients doing business with you. Pretty soon I realized there was a big disconnect between what barbers were posting and barbers wanted to post, versus what clients actually want in real life. There's so much Photoshop and haircuts, so much crazy blatant enhancement, and it caused a little bit of confusion with clients that weren't aware they were looking at a fake or manufactured haircut. I hear a bunch of traumatized client stories telling me about how they went to a barber and you know, he diced them up or whatever. Super, super sharp line, enhanced it up, all that stuff. And then a week later, it's a crazy pushback. They were going for a real sharp, Instagram picture worthy haircut, but what the client really wanted was something that isn't so flashy, that isn't the most sharp. They wanted something that fits their head, fix their functionality, fix their lifestyle, all that stuff. Clients don't give a fuck about your likes on Instagram. They care about the haircut and the service fitting what they need and what they value. So there was so much time in my early career where I was focused on trying to build my online presence, thinking that that was directly gonna to translate to business. But what really translates to business is the things I do behind the content, my interactions with my clients. Social media is literally just a catalog. It's not a reflection of how people value your business. And the people that are engaged with your content aren't necessarily the people that are gonna engage with your business and sit in your chair. Not understanding the difference between quality and engagement was my issue. My number five biggest regret as a barber, not being honest with myself. This is super broad. It's gonna apply to a whole bunch of things. But one thing I was thinking about was there's a point in time where I was watching a bunch of haircut tutorials and I was really involved in that world. I was watching them every day. I thought, oh, all these things are making me better because you know they're, they're telling me things and it's in my brain. So I'm more knowledgeable and blah, 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 blah. I'm increasing my value. I'll spend hours watching these tutorials. And then let's say I have like two haircuts that day. I do those two haircuts and they're like, 
and they're just lacking. I just feel that they're lacking. I'm like, bro, I watched all these videos. I'm, I'm more knowledgeable. I said, Why is this not better? And I, and I was like, well, oh wait, no, oh wait, you know, I don't, I don't have the Clippers 360 Jeezy has right now. That's, that's why, that's why they didn't come out the same. Sometimes you tell yourself the goofiest shit. Your tool is just an extension of the artist. Better tools don't necessarily make you a better artist. So I ended up getting new Clippers and I thought, okay, well now, now this whole thing about to jump off, I'm about to put out fire haircuts. Use these shiny new Clippers, the haircuts look the fucking same. And I realized, you know what? It's not these external factors, it's me. It's the skill I gotta hone and work on within myself. So I put in fucking work. I broke down my bait process. I tried implementing different elements of other processes, trying to find what worked for me the best. And then over time, little by little, I started to notice improvements. And then it was just a snowball effect. And I realized like, whenever I refuse to be brutally honest with myself, I'm doing myself a disservice because I'm going out of my way to exacerbate the problem. The problem might not be in the background getting huge and just taking over my life or anything, but anytime I spend not being honest with myself about an issue, that issue is not getting smaller. And learning how to be brutally honest with myself made it so much easier for me to take criticism from other people. And most criticism isn't even a criticism on you as an individual, it's just, a, I feel like this could be done better or more effectively or da 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 da. And I cannot stress that enough, especially in a business like barbering where all your work is commissioned work. You're doing work for other people. You gotta be able to take criticism, even if the criticism doesn't make sense because it's barely about that one specific haircut. It's about the relationship. It's about building a process of healthy communication and to get a good haircut service done. The haircut you do today does not really matter if that's clients coming back in two years, but the process that you applied is what keeps your clients. All right, that's my top five biggest regrets as a barber. If you have any of your own regrets you wanna add, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. If this has sparked any interesting ideas you wanna share, go ahead and comment those too. If you haven't already, follow me on Instagram or as well as TikTok. Go ahead and follow me at Better Barbering and at Cuss by Elvis. Uh, if y'all got any value, go ahead and like, subscribe. Appreciate y'all again. But till next time, craft over clout, I'm out.